Hi, everybody. Give it a moment for y'all to come on in. I'm gonna let my hair down. Come on into the classroom, and I'm gonna grab the board here. Come on in. I'm grab my board. Hi. How's everybody today? I'm in black. I'm the woman in black. <laughs> Come on in. Looking for something I want to show you. Hi. Okay, well, let's get started. It looks like everybody's here. Hi, everybody. I'm Manorama, and this is Sanskrit Studies and Luminous Soul Corner, and I want to welcome you all here today. And you'll notice I'm wearing red lipstick. Okay, so if Melanie is on this call, she told me, wear red lipstick. So here I am. So hi, everybody. Here I am. And um, today I want to talk about the Sanskrit. You're there. Hi, Mel. <laughs> Going to see you soon in Texas. So I wanted to talk about Sanskrit vowels and um, which actually, believe it or not, after all these years, Sanskrit, the Sanskrit vowels are a very dear subject to me. These vowels are so amazing. They're just like, everything depends on these vowels. So um, in terms of Sanskrit. So we'll speak a little bit more about that. And then I wanna talk about pronunciation of the yamas as described in Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. So we're gonna talk about how to pronounce these yamas correctly because often I hear people say yama and niyama, even though that's not a yama, but people will say niyamas. And I want you to try to work a little bit with the correct pronunciation because um, when we have correct pronunciation, it just helps us align more with the um, with the topic at hand you know you just feel better about that so it's a little hot in my house so i might actually put the hair up for now we'll leave it down okay so uh what do i want to do today i'll start with the vowels let's do that to begin with i love our little sessions <laughs> okay so sanskrit has these vowels and one of the cool things is there's a really uniformity in the language, as you look on your palate and as you work with your palate, there's a uniformity to the way the sounds are made. So we're gonna talk about that and make sounds. So let's just try working with these sounds to begin with. I'll give you the transliteration as well. Many of you know them, but it's a good refresher, okay? So take a look at this. If you want, you can take a, uh, like a screenshot. I'll be like your Sanskrit Vanna White. <laughs> I'm Manorama, your Sanskrit Vanna White. Okay, so you have here, the first vowel is pronounced a. Uh. Can you say that? A. Uh. So you just drop that jaw and you say a. Uh. Did I say jaw? Oh God, I really am from New York. You can take the girl out of New York, but you can't take the New York out of the girl. Okay, so first what I want you to do is you're gonna just ground in your seed, that's what we always do. Feel your feet underneath you. If you're sitting on the floor, you can just feel your tush underneath you and the floor. And what I want you to do is just pay attention and just really feel the floor and from that level of connectivity, follow after me. Uh, say, uh, get used to moving that jaw, okay? And remember everybody, we have short and long vowels in Sanskrit. So the next one is gonna be ah. Uh. Drop the jaw down and say ah, uh. good. Okay, the next is gonna be e. Can you say e? And the next is u. Say u. Good. And finally, the long u. U. So notice you have you have two vowels at the first mouth position, and these are called a short and a long. So it's short long at the second mouth position, short long, and at the fifth mouth position short long. Now let's look at the positions for a moment. You've got position one, two, three, four, and then the lips, five. So we've been looking right now at the sounds that occur here, sounds that occur here, and sounds that occur here. 
So you don't have to do that on your palette. It's automatically happening when you're making sound, but I just want you to be aware of that. So uh, let's, let's do that again. So I'll say the sound, ready? Feel this at the first mouth position. Uh, say, uh. Notice the vibration in your chest. Notice the vibration in your vocal cords. Uh, words like yoga, right? Or words like yama, yama, good. Okay, the next is gonna be long ah. Uh. Say, ah, uh. ah, uh. excellent. Words like Atma, drop that jaw down. Atma, <clears throat> or words like Ananda. Say that again. Ananda. So oftentimes you hear people say Ananda. And while, of course, everybody in the Sanskrit community knows that people say Ananda and it's not a big deal on an, on an American level, right? Because that's just what people are doing. But on a Sanskrit level, sound is merging with meaning. And so when you put a short a uh in front of the, the word nanda, which means joy, you're actually negating it. A short a uh will negate it, just like you have hinsa, which means to harm, and then you have ahinsa, which means not harming or nonviolence or compassion. So the, the short a uh makes it ananda, na joy, or as my cousin in England always says, no joy, when things are not joyful. I like that, it's so direct. But you can make the sound, when you say long ah, it means on all sides of. So when you say ah, nanda, say ah, nanda, it means joy everywhere. And that's called bliss. And I know in our culture, we don't really have much of a understanding of what bliss is. For us, bliss is either a spa treatment or an ice cream, but, or a super decadent sort of, um, dessert, but bliss in yoga is the experience where you're missing nothing, where you are in a state of balance and a state of harmony. And we'll speak more about this in another class. So you've got a, uh, ah, uh. good. Now say a, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, the next, you're going to move forward on your palate and say e, e. That's going to be a short beat, a one beat. Say shanti, shanti, good and shakti, shakti, excellent. Now we're gonna do the long, say e, you say e, I'm gonna give, tap myself twice, e, e, that's words like devi, devi, goddess, okay? And then we have u, say that, short u, u. Ooh. Words like guru. So it's not the guru, it's guru. Chatu. Chaturanga. Things like that, right? So bring those lips to the circle and you want to go ooh for one beat, one beat, one beat. Okay, the next vowel is the final vowel that we'll look at for today is ooh. Now you say ooh, give it a two beat. Words like chamu the army, and vadhu, the bride, okay? Chamu, vadhu. So let's chant the whole thing together. I'll lead you follow. And if you can't chant from wherever you are, you can just kind of follow in your mind and watch and try to map out the rhythm. Uh, uh, e, e, ooh, ooh. Uh, uh, e, e, ooh, ooh. Ah ah e e oo ah ah e e oo Now just take a moment to pause. And we're going to do that again, but we're going to um as we do it, I want you to place your right palm on your chest. I'm going to do that too in a second. I just want to clear my board here. So place your right palm on your chest. If you have jewelry, just put it underneath. Ah ah e e oo say ah ah e e oo and you'll feel this vibration 
you'll feel this energy right there in your chest and in your throat. If you can do the same exercise and feel your vocal cords, this is the seat of communication. This is the heart. And so Sanskrit awakens uh, these different aspects as well as the crown of the head. You'll feel a lot of uh, energy and a lot of um, vibration at the crown. Okay, so we're going to also work on pronouncing the yamas. So I wanted to direct your attention to the Yoga Sutra um, page. Well, if you happen to have my teacher's book, this is his book. It's properly written Sanskrit. His name was Shri Brahmananda Sarasvati. And he was such a loving person, but he loved Sanskrit. So if you don't have this book, I highly recommend you getting it. You can hop on over to sanskritstudies.org and order it. Um, my teacher gave, in each exercise, he would give the Sanskrit form for um, the individual and then when they get blended. So there's always two forms in Sanskrit. There's the pre-blend and the blend. Okay, so uh, we're in chapter two, the Sadhana Pada. And we come to the, um, the so in the Sadhana Pada, uh, Sutra number 29, Patanjali says, he outlines his Ashtanga Yoga system. And he begins it, he says, Yama, Niyamasana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadha, Yoshtavangani. And in here he talks about the steps or the uh, limbs of yoga, the eight limbs of yoga, and he just makes that announcement. And then he uh, goes into the yamas, okay? So, but he gives that as his foundation. The yamas are the foundation. So today, I wanna work predominantly on pronunciation, not so much on meaning, and we're gonna just go through each one of these yamas. So actually, let's do this. Uh, one second. Hope you have a piece of paper so you can write this out. I'm going to show you a page in a moment. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to just do this first to begin with. So the category, and this is the first limb, is called yama. Can you just say that? There's no accent anywhere. They're both short us. It's very simple. It's yama. Try saying that. These are the yamas. Everybody, these are the yamas. Very good. Okay, now we're gonna start with the first one. The first one is a lot of people say something different, but I want you to follow my lead in terms of pronunciation. This is written a, uh, ha, e, anuswara, and sa. That is the M with a dot above it is not any ordinary M. For those of you who are Westerners, we tend to look at that and we think, oh, ahimsa, but it's not ahimsa. If you've been pronouncing it that way, oh, ahimsa like that, <laughs> it's not correct. So you can say that, I can call it Sanskrit, but it's not the correct pronunciation of the language, it's Sanskrita, right? But sometimes, you know, uh, we would use Sanskrit, let's say, today I was uh, speaking with someone on Orbitz, I had to call Orbitz, and the guy said, what's your email address? And I had to say sanskritstudies.org, manorama at sanskritstudies.org. And he didn't understand, so I had to say Sanskrit, right? So there's a time and a place perhaps for poor pronunciation, but not within the context of a yoga class. In a yoga class, you wanna keep refining, keep refining. So let's go into this. This is pronounced, watch my palate, ahinsa, ahinsa. Now you say, ahinsa. Ahinsa. Good. You're going to drop here. You're going to drop the jaw on the long ah. And you're going to accent the he. And you're going to let this M become more like a French nasal. And you're going to go like this. Ahinsa. Ahinsa. Try that. Ahinsa. Ahinsa. Very good. Okay. The next uh, yama, and this is non-violence. We can just give that as a beginning step. This is not a class describing the yamas. This is simply about pronunciation. The next we're gonna talk about pronouncing is the word, um, the second of the yamas, and it is satya. Can you say that? What I want you to notice is the sa is at the fourth mouth position. The ta is at the fourth mouth position. If you've studied any Sanskrit, there are two types of t's and d's in Sanskrit. There's a t and a d at the third and a t and a d at the 
fourth. This is at the fourth. If you haven't studied Sanskrit, this is your introduction to it, no problem. Enjoy the intro. And just note that, oh, there's a, there's a T and a D at the third and a T and a D at the fourth. And then you'll keep coming back to the subject and playing with it, okay? So here you say, you're gonna, that fourth mouth position is when that you have that spaced out cat or dog where you bring the tongue forward and you bite down slowly, but not with much uh, force. Just like a little, kind of, I used to say it's where the spaced out cat or dogs, when the cats and dogs sit in the window and they do this. You ever see cats and dogs just kind of be lazy? So that's what I want you to do, but without the hands, bring that tongue forward. This is the fourth mouth position to you, and that's gonna make for a refinement of the pronunciation. So say the word again in like this. Watch my palate. Satya. Satya. Can you say that? Satya. Satya. Good. So let's say all three of these. Yama. Yama. And then the yamas now start. Ahinsa. Ahinsa. And Satya. Satya. Okay. Are there any questions up to here? Let me just give you a minute to ask any questions in terms of pronunciation. Any questions? No? Okay. Satya, we didn't say, is uh, truth. And so, um, so there's that. Okay, let's look at the next uh, few of the yamas. We've got, um, take a look. Say this one for me. Can you see it? Maybe you want to take a picture of that one. Sometimes people like to do a click. Okay. So this one is asteya. Now notice here you've got the a, uh, but it's followed by this conjunction, so you're going to have to fall heavy. And then also notice you've got the a, so that's going to have to fall heavy. And you've got this the, which is at which mouth position? Who can tell me which mouth position it's at? Somebody on this call has been studying Sanskrit with me. Who can tell me which mouth position this th is at? If there's no dot underneath it, it's 100% clear. If there's a dot, it's one thing. If there's no dot underneath it, it's another. So which is it? Fourth. Yes, Rosalind, exactly. It's the fourth mouth position. It's that position that I was just talking with you about for Satya. Excellent, Roz. So remember to bring your tongue into the fourth, everybody. So we're going to go like this. Accent here, fourth mouth position, and hold long on the A. And then you're just going to glide right into that yeah. So you go like this. Asteya. Asteya. Let's take it in pieces. Asteya. As they and then we're gonna put it together. As they as they So we've got ahinsa, say, ahinsa, satya, satya, as they as they Very good. As they non stealing, a third element of these five yamas. And then we're going to go to the next one. I hope I spelled it correctly. Yes, I did. Okay. This is the tricky piece about this particular um, word. It's a this right in here. It's the H and the M following after each other. And you'll notice that people often pronounce this word as if the M was in front of the H. So in traditional scholarship, you maintain the H. But those scholars in the Sanskrit community said, okay, if it's so difficult for people, we definitely don't want them saying Brahma. They don't like the Kh. It is in older Sanskrit, but it is not in classical Sanskrit. We don't have a Kh, and it certainly isn't in this word, so they don't want it to become Brahma. So they say, you know what, put the M in front, it's easier for people, and then it will be Brahma. So you'll often hear the word pronounced Brahma, but that is sort of, um, it's not incorrect, but it's sort of like grandfathered it. 
but the more scholarly way to pronounce it, and you can certainly practice and try, is to allow the ha huh to be in front and then the ma, and just let the sound be um, soft. You have to push the sound to be soft. Let me just, my low battery is flashing. Okay, so you want to go like this. Hama, hama, hama. Can you try that? Hama. Okay, so try this. Brahma. Just that part. Say that. Brahma. Brahma. Good. Good. So if you just keep it soft and go a little bit slower, you know, you don't rush ahead, then you'll be fine. And try not to push. For those of you who are fiery types, I'm a fiery type too. I had to learn. Don't push it. Right? Just, just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. So it's Brahma and then Charya. Brahma Charya. Say that. Brahma Charya. Brahma Charya. And it's a very subtle, listen carefully, it's this. Brahma Charya. Brahma Charya. Right? It's a little hama, hama. So you got to get that little subtle subtlety. It's quite nice when you hear it properly said and it feels really good to say it. So Brahma Charya. Okay, so brahmacharya means, uh, sometimes it's translated as celibacy, but another way to look at it is conduct directed towards Brahman, limitless reality. And again, this is not a class in philosophy, but at some point I'd be happy to uh, share more with you about uh, my interpretation of the yamas, of Patanjali's yamas. Okay, so uh, finally... Uh, actually, give me some hearts if you guys are really wanting me to speak about the yamas, and I'll prepare some classes uh, where we can go a little bit more into the yamas. Throw me some hearts if that's something that you guys are interested in. Okay, it looks like, looks like perhaps there's an interest. Great. Okay, so we'll look for that in the future coming soon. Okay, and finally, let's do the last. And this is often mispronounced as aparigraha. Listen to the poor pronunciation of it, aparigraha. Forget that, okay? So what I want you to do is accent the E and let the rest be very light. So it's going to be like this, apari and then ta ta ta. So aparigraha, aparigraha. You're only going to accent the E and let the rest go. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Aparigraha, aparigraha, so not aparigraha, nope, no aparigraha, that sounds like, I don't know, maybe a meal down at the diner, I'll have the aparigraha and some orange juice, um, <laughs> but this is aparigraha, say, aparigraha, so aparigraha, one more time, aparigraha, so we've got Asteya Brahmacharya Aparigraha. Now you try. Asteya Brahmacharya Aparigraha. Ahinsa, everybody, Ahinsa Satya Satya Asteya Asteya Brahmacharya Brahmacharya Aparigraha. Aparigraha. Not a parigraha. Push yourself away from that habit. Okay? Aparigraha. Aparigraha. You're going to accent that ri. Accent right there. And the rest is just do, 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 do. Okay? And these are called yamas. Again, not the yamas and the niyamas. Leave that aside. That's just an Americanization or a Westernization. Could be happening also in other countries that speak English. But instead, what I want you to do is just focus on where I've hit these accent points. Let's do it one more time. Yama, you say, yama. Ahinsa, ahinsa. Satya, satya. Asteya, asteya. Brahmacharya, brahmacharya. Aparigraha, aparigraha. Yay! Great job, everybody. Okay, any questions up to there? I wanted to just read uh, the sutra.
no questions. Okay, if you want to review this just to do a little more homework on your own and to sort of wrap things up together, you can definitely look in a properly translated and transliterated um, Yoga Sutra book. The Sutra is Sutra chapter 2.30. So it's Sutra number 30 in chapter 2 of Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. He says, Ahinsa Satyasteya Brahmacharya Parigraha Yama. Okay, what does it say? Nonviolence, ahinsa, truth, satya, non stealing, asteya, <clears throat> abidance in God or the self, brahmacharya, and aparigraha, non possessiveness of the mind. These are the five yamas and they constitute the first limb of the practice of yoga. So not only can you work with them on a philosophical level, but you can also work with them on a pronunciation level. You can watch this video again, practice, bring this into your classes, bring that inspiration, you know, show people as a teacher of yoga, as a practitioner, that you're always growing and that you support that growth in yourself. And I'm always growing. I don't know about you guys, but I assume you are. And, um, just start to notice how when you say them properly, when you say the sounds in Sanskrit properly, they give you a different kind of access. It's like any language, you know, if you say it correctly, <clears throat> you start to get closer to the culture of a people. Mm. And who are the culture? Or what is the culture of the people here? The culture of the people here are the yogis, the rishi culture. The culture of the seers of light. Any questions? I'll erase the board here, my little pink board. <clears throat> no questions? Sure. for the hearts <laughs> okay so if there's no questions thank you that means a lot um, then we'll close with this you know um, it's a huge subject Sanskrit and it's a meaningful subject and it's a subject that I never take for granted even though I've been exposed to it since I was 13 training with my Guruji, I never, ever, ever take it for granted. It's like, even to this day, I'm 44, incarnated now at 44, and for me, it's still, I'm always in awe that that was my opportunity. Thank you, I appreciate you as well. Um, that it was my opportunity and privilege to spend so much time with him and train under him, and um, and to be able to share this with all of you is, is a blessing and a gift for me. And I appreciate you coming here today. Um, in terms of announcements, this Friday I have a live satsang at Shanti Kutir on West 10th Street. So if you happen to be in New York, hop on over to the website and you can uh, join me for that class. And then also um, upcoming, we have the Sanskrit. I'm going to do one more year of the level one course and then I'm not going to offer it for a couple of years. So I'll be doing the Sanskrit level one. It's 10 modules, 10 modules, Sanskrit level one. Um, and that, of course, you have to do before you do level two and so on and so forth. But the level one um, is a comprehensive look at the Sanskrit language and to start getting you moving in the language, looking at the grammar and um, working with pronunciation on a regular basis. You're going to learn how to pronounce sutras. You're going to work with asana names, also with the Gita verses and looking at grammar in the language and, and really uh, kind of demystifying some of it. But, but when we demystify it, it only makes the mystery grow deeper. It's like you uncover one piece and the next piece just opens up and it's so very beautiful. Um, we've had a great group this year. It's been a phenomenal year with everybody. Thanks for the hearts on that. I know a bunch of you are in the class today. And so I look forward to the next group. So that starts October 15th. So if you're interested to do that, get your buns over to sanskritstudies.org and check out um, the options for joining us. You can do module by module or you can do kind of a little payment plan if you're interested. Um, don't let anything stand in your way. It, 
it took me years, but I finally figured out um, how to describe Sanskrit in a way that makes it easy and accessible for, for students. And we have such a wonderful time in the class. So uh, definitely check that out. And then of course, uh, additionally, um, uh, I don't know what else we have going on. I guess we have satsang also happening at Jiva Mukti in September. You can check that out on the website. So that's about it for today. I'm going to sign off. And um, since there's no other questions, what I will leave you with is this. Please practice pronouncing these. You can watch this video again. And don't forget to pronounce as you see the word. Write it out. You know, listen to the things I'm saying, map them out. Every little ounce that you bring to the practice is actually merging with the practice itself and it's gonna make your experience of the language come alive so much more. And it's really such a beautiful practice, so I invite you to enjoy the process, right? So we'll do it one more time. Ready? Together. Yama. Good. Okay, so we go number one, two, three, four, and five. Ahinsa. Ahinsa. Satya, Satya, Asteya, Asteya, Brahmacharya, Brahmacharya, Aparigraha, Aparigraha. Beautiful. Okay, everybody. Mwah. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in class soon. Be blessed, everybody, and remember, you are beautiful, you are powerful, and you are free. You are all luminous souls. Much love to you too, Mel, and everybody. I love you all. Mwah. Be blessed, everybody. I love you. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day and practice your Sanskrit. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Lots of love. Bye, everybody.